Um, he's got four older brothers. Uh, they have, oh, oh, there he is. Look. All right. All right. Just hang there on. He is. Don't get too excited. I'm Let's getting see. Which way do I work this thing? Hello. Hey. Hey, y'all. This is Lance. How y'all? What's going on, mister? Hey, you're uh, live. Hello. How y'all do? Who's happier than a puppy with two Peters. <laughs> yes. I, if I had to, I don't know what I'd do with it. I think uh, <laughs> you'd have a lot of trouble with your girlfriend, that's what. <laughs> She's already here keeping an eye on you. Yeah, everybody's here. You've got lots of people in the chat room waiting to hear from you. There's Jay Davis, there's Jane Harlow, Kaylee Liz, Mark State, your lovely lady, Jarice. There's absolutely loads of people, you know, so say you, hello to everybody. Can you understand the Brit all right? I, I can understand everything you say perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew it. <laughs> I can't hear understand a word. I'm say. trying to verse her in the English ways, and it don't seem to be working so well. <laughs> well, good luck, buddy. A little, more that, luck. little more of that Texas whoop-ass, I think. She'll be all right. <laughs> all right. Give her a little more time. So how are you tonight? You got time to chat for a little bit? Oh, I got some time. Yeah, go right ahead. I'd love to chat with you. Well, she already spilled the beans she's on her way to see, and we don't interrupt anything, you know, that might be going on later. Well, you don't ever know. <laughs> There's times I don't want to know, but that's another story. <laughs> so, uh, what's the good word in the music scene? You doing all right? Looks like uh, from some of the things I've been reading, you're climbing right up the charts there, huh? Yeah, we're doing a lot of we're doing a lot of moving on the charts and getting a lot of airplay. Like good people like y'all for uh, having us on your show and playing our music, and uh, you know all the fans out there that support us, you know, by shows or either on social media, you know. And it's just been it's been awesome. We've been doing a lot of touring and. Uh, Man, it's been a lot of fun. Are you kidding me? We're tickled to death to have you here. And your song, oh, your I'm, songs I'm, I'm are great. To be here, to be with y'all. And uh, tail lights and dust is already my favorite. Them old redneck country boy backwoods kind of things. That's my kind of tune right there. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's, that's a good old backwoods fun song, party song. That's that's for sure. Yeah, I was telling Donna about going back into two lane old dirt roads and taking the girls out there and smoking and drinking and carrying on like a bunch of youngins. Having having a ball with you. What's it like <laughs> over there? Me. Good memories. Oh hell, that's that's all I got left to live on. <laughs> what uh, what's it like where you live in Georgia? Backwoods, quiet kind of place. It says there's only about a thousand people or so around where you live. Well, the the, the town that I that I grew up in is where my mom and I have a, have a restaurant there. But we we were born and raised about seven miles out of town there, and uh, and it's you know I'm a backwoods country boy, man. I love dirt roads and fishing and hunting. Yes, sir. That's my thing. And pretty women. <laughs> um. Okay. Moving along. <laughs> I ain't even going to that subject. So some of, some of these songs that we were listening to today, did you did you write those songs or does somebody else write them for you? The, that Tell Life and Dust was wrote by Dean Sams, which is one of the members of Lone Star. And uh, we were working on the record and, and we kind of got bogged down and, and writing a lot of ballads and stuff like that. And uh, it was a song that was pitched to us and, uh, and I just absolutely fell in love with the song and I thought it'd be a great fit for the album. And... Uh, and I, because I've lived that story, you know, and I've done those kind of things, so it's a, it's an easy fit for me. And, and we decided to do it, and I'm glad we did because it's been a uh, it's been a tremendous blessing for us for radio about so far. How uh, how'd you get into music? I mean, I mean, I always loved music, and uh, when I was like eight years old, I had a uh, a part to sing in a Christmas play in my church, and and uh, and I just nobody else would do it, so I jumped up there and did it, and I've been singing ever since, and. Uh, we started our first band in high school together, me and three friends of mine, and we uh, we all started playing, and we, a few of us are still playing, and, and I've been playing music ever since. I always like the backstory. I think that's a lot more fun to listen to than it, some of the uh, other stuff. It, it, it's, it's, been a, it's been an adventure, let's put it that way. <laughs> I do have a question from somebody in the chat room. Mark State is in the chat room, and he said, Lance, what is your take on the new bro country? The bro country. What is bro well, country? I, I think I think it's interesting. You know, it's uh, and everybody asks me. I've had a lot of people ask me that 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 question because I'm really good friends with with a Colt Ford. You know, which is kind of a hip hop rapper or whatever country rapper they call it or whatever. If it's good music, whether it's country, rock, pop, it don't make a darn to me. If it's good music, I like it. You know, and and you know anything that to to better uh, you know further the country music and keep it alive. I'm all for it. Hey, if it works for them, I'm happy for them. That's what I'm saying. Whatever moves you, that's the key to the whole thing. That's exactly right. It's all about the music. It, whether or not it's got a backbeat or a loop or whatever, if it's a lyrically written great song, I'm, I love it. You know? what, what was it like the first time you got up in front of a large crowd to, to do your thing? 
Well, the first time I played in front of a huge, a big, big crowd, I was a little bit nervous and not going. I'd be lying if I told you I wasn't. But uh, and it, I was hooked, you know, back watching Garth Brooks live, man. And I, and I, that's the whole thing. I, I love to play live, and and, uh, and it just turned me on watching him play, you know. And I was like, that's what I'm going to do, and and that's what we're doing. Did you get that I, big chill sure. factor? Do it now. Did you get that big chill factor first time you got up there and everybody oh, stood man. up like crazy? You know, it, it gives you goosebumps all up and down your arms and back and neck, everywhere you could get them, I believe. And, uh, you know, when the fans are there and, and they're come out to support you, and that means everything. It means the world to us. Oh, wow. yeah. I know. I'm uh, I'm great, you know, sitting here behind the mic and all that, but I'm not worth a crap when I get up in front of people. I just freeze. You could do it. Shit. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I hear you're going to be cruising with Dave Summers very, very soon. Um, are you going to be performing on that cruise? On the cruise, yeah. The, there's uh, there's a, uh, a thing that we're putting together and uh, with Carnival, and it's going to be an adventure there. It's going to be a seven day cruise, and we're going to perform on the on the cruise ship for everybody. And uh, we're just going to be out there having a good time. Well, if Dave Summers is going to be there, you can guarantee it's going to be an adventure. Uh. I, I, that's that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> oh, great guy, great operation there. They uh, they take care of people like you wouldn't even believe. Yeah. I mean, the things they they go well, out of their way to do is amazing. But just watch out for Dave because he calls you up in the middle of the night with lots of heavy breathing and stuff. You know, he's a bit weird like that. But <laughs> other than that, he's a great I, guy. I, I live on vampire hours anyway. I'm up I'm up late at night and go to sleep early in the morning. So oh, I'm fine that, with that. That's all right then. Maybe you can call him and do the heavy breathing. <laughs> <laughs> you doing a lot of recording now? Yeah, we're actually we're uh, I'm getting back in the studio coming up here here shortly in the next week or so, and uh, we're we're gonna try to finish up some stuff that we've been working on, and uh, I've got some brand new music that we're gonna put out in, in the end of August, and I'm I know everybody's chomping at the bits for it, and, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting it out there for everybody to hear. That's a good deal. Where do you record at? I don't mean necessarily the address, well, but I mean what part Nashville, of the country? In Nashville, and and Nashville, and we're a bunch of guys. You know, Dink is a guy that plays with a lot of artists. He's a guy doing playing the bass guitar on, on my newer stuff. But uh, and uh, Dave McAvee is the guy helping me produce this newer part of my album. He's the uh, drummer for Toby Keith. Many of us working together. We worked together on a demo that I did a few years ago, and I told him whenever I got ready, you know, we, you know, we would get together and do some collaborating. And, one of those things everybody's like well who you run into and all this kind of thing most of the time when i'm in town i'm i'm, I'm writing or recording and stuff like that if we have a little time I'll, I'll i'll find out which whoever my friends are in town that's playing somewhere and we'll go out and support them but you know i i never really go out looking to to run into somebody and if you do hey i'm, I'm glad i'm happy for it you know it, it's a lot of fun that town is a lot of fun in nashville if you've never been there people you need to check it out oh yes sir amen to that because that's a gorgeous place i love getting down there in music row and hanging out with some of them crazy people oh yeah absolutely even the punk rockers running around down there back well back then anyways they used to surprise the hell out of me hey, really? you, have, you have another question in the <laughs> chat room mark state said in your opinion what is the end all be all got to be the best damn country song ever recorded what is it the best country song that any artist has ever recorded country wise. Yep, in your opinion. Well, everybody knows I'm a huge fan of all the all the you know the the eighties and nineties and country, but uh probably in the more modern realm the when I first heard this song I thought it was just a well written song, one of the best written songs in probably the last ten years. And that was in color by Jamie Johnson. I think it's probably the best written song in the last ten years to me. Jamie Johnson? Oh, yeah, Jamie Johnson in color. Make sure I write that down. I'm going to find that and play it. Yeah. So what? how would you describe your daily life? You know, get up in the morning. What do you do with oh, your day? Well, it's just depending on what, what, what's going on. If we're touring, you know, it's uh, it's not a very early morning unless we're doing radio. <laughs> Sleep in because most of the time we're on the road, you know, and it's 3 o'clock before everybody gets back to their rooms or, or back on the motorhome or, or whatever. And, uh it's an interesting thing, you know. But if I'm if I'm back home and, and when I'm off the road, man, it's you know I, I get up and 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 go out and feed my my dog and and you know go out and maybe grab a pole and and, and wet some hooks in the water and catch a few fish. And wait, 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 grab a season, pole. I'll get up and go hunting. <laughs> and that's what I that's what I normally do. You're confusing the Brit already. Rewind a bit. You grab a pole and what? <laughs> wet some hooks, man. Drown some worms. Wet some hooks. What? Drown about? some worms. Drown some worms. You ain't never been fishing. Oh, fishing. <laughs> I knew that all along. <laughs> yeah, you did. You only know one worm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me get to something that's important on my list over here. Um, okay. You a Ford pickup man? 
Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to a Ford, but I'm a Chevrolet man. All right. I knew that was coming. Damn country boys. I'm a Chevrolet man. But now Ford makes an awesome vehicle. Now, I've owned a few, and, and I've had great you know service out of, out of any, all of the Fords and Chevrolets that I've owned. But I'm a Chevrolet fan. Well, I just saw here that uh, it said your first musical memories came through the speakers of Dad's 79 Ford. So I thought maybe that yep. might have carried on, yep. too. And, 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 you know, that's those memories that I'll never forget, you know. And uh, and and I just I just I was always turned on by Chevrolet. I liked the way they looked. And, and I remember the first one I got was a, was a 90 model Chevrolet Silverado. And, and I just, ever since then, man, I've just been a Chevrolet man. What are you driving, a four-wheel drive? Actually, I don't drive a four-wheel drive. I drive a two-wheel drive. You're blowing the whole country image out of whack here. You know that, don't you? Well, you know, I, I, everybody's like, why don't you have a four-wheel drive? I was like, man, if I had a four-wheel drive, it'd be, you know, I'm not going to take my nice truck out in the mud. <laughs> if it's that muddy, if it's that muddy, I'll get on the four-wheeler. That's, you more, know like what a, mean? that's more like a city boy. <laughs> no, oh, man, no. <laughs> My money comes too hard to get out of the mud and tear it up. <laughs> Maybe that's what them city boys are doing. Buy all them fancy wheels and big tires and jack it no, up and make no, it look pretty. I'm not pretty. no fancy wheels thing. My son's been on me. He's like, they need to get some rims for your truck. And I'm like, what? what's wrong with the ones that come on from the factory? That's right. You know? <laughs> yeah, but you can see where he's going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, you also like Def Leppard and Poison, huh? Now, you know, because uh, you know, back when I was, I got brother, I got four brothers that are older than me, and I got two that are that are thirteen, right at fourteen years older than me, and, and going to school and riding to school with them, they, you know, they, I didn't have any choice to listen to all the hair bands and and, and loved their and loved all the music, you know, Poison, Rat, Def Leppard, Metallica, uh, Cinderella, all those, you know, the great hair bands back in the eighties, you know, and uh, and it, and I guess that's what kind of intertwined to the my, my my style. I guess it's still country, but it's got a little bit of that influence in the background. One of these truck drivers says a truck's meant for mud. <laughs> we got lots of truck drivers tuning in, so you've got a good audience here, too. Yes, and I just want to say a quick hello to Sandy Fisher and Christine Brown's coming here, and there's Janet from Oklahoma, Nicholas Rich as well, and Jane Harlow. Everybody's coming here to say hello to you. Uh, what have you got to say to these guys in the chat room? I, I'm sorry, I couldn't quite understand what you're saying. <laughs> Can you speak in English, please? I will speak in English. <laughs> I said, there's lots of people in the chat room that's coming to see you, to say hello to you. Is there anything that you'd like to say to them? Well, I would like to say thank you, and thanks for all the all the support. You don't know exactly how much it means to Words can't express how much it means to us for all the support that they give us day in and day out and uh, and all the help they do on social media with us. You know, without them, we'd just be playing music for ourselves. You you've, uh, you've uh, what? There's another question in the chat room from Mark. Who is it that found you and gave you your big break? Oh, well, you know, it, it, it's kind of hard to say. You know, I always give everything that I do to, to the Lord. But uh, I guess in the break in the music business, you know, back uh, about six and a half years, seven years ago, I met Colt Ford and uh, and got the opportunity to do a show for open for him. And uh, we just kind of become friends. And because and, he actually, you know, let me open for him for several shows for about a year probably. And then he, you know, being on the show with him, he got me on with Brantley Gilbert doing some shows with opening for him and Justin Moore and and uh, Luke and everybody. And uh, I guess I'd have to say thanks to Colt Ford for uh, being a friend and kind of you know, let me do you know the opener for it. When when did you learn to play the guitar and sing? You know, you got quite well. A time, I, huh? I, I you know I was singing like I said when I started when I was eight, and then when all my buddies in school there were a couple guys played guitar, and one guy played drums, and I'm like you know I started band and I was just doing the singing thing, and I'm like man I need to play guitar. And uh, so I started pick, picking and playing them when I was around 14, 15 years old. How and, long did it take you to get a grip on the guitar? Well, it, it's one of those things, man. And that's why I try to tell a lot, a lot of, you know, young kids and stuff that are like, you know, I'm, I bought me a guitar, but, you know, it's a little, you know, hurts your fingers. It, you got to build those calluses on your fingers. And, uh, you know, you just got to bear with it. Anything worth doing is not easy, you know. But it probably took me a good, you know, six, seven, eight months to uh, get a real good grip on it. Six or seven, eight months must be a natural then. No, no, I ain't no natural. I'm a, I'm a picker now. I'm, not, I'm, I'm a strummer. I'm not no big fancy player, you know. No, all right. And do you have any <laughs> hidden talents? Hidden talents? Huh, hidden talents. I don't know. You maybe, you maybe should ask some of my fans, people that bet me. I don't know if I have any hidden talents, but because uh, I'm pretty open there, I don't really leave anything to, to guess. Hidden talents. Hidden talents. Well, a lot of people probably already know, but I played baseball back in high school, and I, and I was a fairly good player. 
Are you? Wow. Girl, I guess that would be my hidden talent. I guess. You do any carpentry work on your own or anything like that? You know, you know, I, I've done a little bit. I can, I can lay some tile and 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 and, and maybe put a screen door together. That's a <laughs> step in the right direction. <laughs> uh, you're working on your second album. You said a little bit earlier. Second album, we, we're we're just about finished with it. Uh, we've got a few more things, a few more songs to uh, to uh, cut and finish up. We've just been doing some, you know, writing for. I've been writing and, and picking songs for about two years and trying to put this thing together. And I just everybody's been hounding me and hounding me on on my on my my management side and stuff. But I'm like, y'all guys don't understand when when I put this album out. When I'm done with it, I want people when they buy it to really think they got their their money's worth. Because I don't want to put an album out that's a good album. I want a great album with, you know, ten great songs on it. You know, not four or five great songs. With Absolutely. Songs. I want them all to be great, and I want them to love every one of them. Right. And that way, they're getting their money's worth. You know. It's, so that's why I've taken a little more time, and and uh, to, I want to make sure I get it get it right for them. There's a release date of August. I guess that's this month. Is that still going to happen? Yeah, we're we're actually. It looks like we're on track uh, to put some new music out then, and uh, we're we're running real close. I can tell you that. You uh, you got any worries about the sophomore album curse? Well, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, everybody's like, you you know, do you want to sell a million, million records? I'm like, yeah, who wouldn't want to sell a million, million records? But my biggest goal is to, uh, you know, just keep on out on the road and, and, and be able to make a, a decent living and, and, and enjoy what we're doing. And, you know, and people enjoy the music that we're putting out and not really, you know, and, you know, harp on, you know, we got to sell a million records. That's, that's. You know, that's always something we'd love to do, but it's not our action. That's not something we got to do. You know, and 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 that's the way I look at it. What are we looking at here? You keep pointing, and yours is highlighted. Lance, when you opened for Brantley Gilbert, did he pull a prank on you? That's a question from Craig Wilson in the chat room. What, what was the question about Brantley Gilbert? Come on, tell him in English. Uh, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> when you opened, when you opened for Brantley Gilbert, did he pull a prank on you? You know, Brantley didn't. You know, it was back when Brantley was just breaking out too, and, and we were both kind of, kind of young and coming up. But uh, it, Brantley's a super nice guy, and I'm really proud of all the success he's had. And he needs everybody like, man, you come from nowhere. I'm gonna tell you that guy's been working hard for years and years and years. It just didn't happen overnight. I can promise you that. And everything he's getting, he deserves because he's an, he's an awesome guy. I guess uh, Craig must have had the inside on him, jerking your chain somewhere along the line there. Well, there's a lot of those guys now, man. They've been out and do those pranks, but that's it. I didn't get any pranking when we were out on the road together. What's the story on the Stinson's barbecue? Is that uh, part? Is that a, still a family thing? Yeah, it's still a family thing. It, it's cool. Where's that at? It's a, it's a cool little joint. It's in Lumber City, Georgia. It's it's in a little small town, but it's uh it's uh it's some really good stuff. You know, they make their own sauce and and they <laughs> they cook the meat slow. And I mean, it's a lot of work. They put a lot of love in what they do. What are you giggling about now over there? Dave in the chat room says. Can you ask Lance to get Donna to rip them wind chimes off? Can you hear my wind chimes? <laughs> Can you hear her wind chimes dingling in the background? No, I didn't hear her wind chimes. Uh-uh. Uh, they're hanging in front of the air conditioner, and Dave uh, uh, Dave is always ragging on about them wind chimes jingling in the background over there. About the wind chimes. That's my background music, man, when you're talking. We That's get that, right. We get That's that little right. uh, fairy effect. You get the mood set. Yeah, that's right. It's a mood setter. Yeah, if you're a fairy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Always makes me think of uh, uh, Taylor Swift, because she looks like a little pixie with that funky little face she's got. What's she a got to do with my wind chime? A pixie. Fairy. Twinkly. Oh, all right, then. <laughs> kind of twinkly, you know? Never mind. Why don't you talk to the Brit a minute? <laughs> Jay Davis in the chat room says you want to find barbecue better. What's that? He wants to find barbecue what now? Barbecue better. You want fine barbecue, barbecue better? better? Or, uh, I don't know. Come on, come on, Randy. Translate. I don't. I don't understand the question. You want to find barbecue better? You want you you want to find barbecue better? Or is he saying my mom and dad? You can't find any better. Is that what he's saying? I'm not quite sure. Jay, can you uh, repeat the question? Not oh, sure and Janet in the chat room says you need to go to Oklahoma because they love you there. Janet O'Connor says you need to go to Oklahoma City. We would love to come to Oklahoma City. I know we're uh, we've got some stuff working out in Texas and. Uh, you know, if we can get some stuff right out of that, that way, man, I would love to go out. That oh, way. if you're coming to Texas, you let us know. Oh, I will definitely. There's some stuff that's been in the works for a while, man. And I'm, you know, I'm like, y'all guys, let's, let's put that together because I've, you know, I've never been to Texas as far as I've been that way the Mississippi and and uh, and Alabama. That's that's as far out that way I've been, and and uh, I'm, I would love to go out that way. Oh hell, we got to get you to Lone Star then. And I could I make you a British cup of tea. What? 
I could make him a British cup of tea. Donna says she'll make you a British cup of tea. <laughs> Are you having to translate British everything? Cup of tea? <laughs> How about I'll, I'll bring you some sweet tea? How about that? All right, then. That's now, a that's deal. a southern way to go right there. I'm waiting for one of them. <laughs> So we're a mason jar with ice. you got to have it that way. Well, if you're bringing me something in a mason jar, don't bring me no sweet tea. <laughs> you know what I'm fixing to see in that. Oh, I know what you're talking about. It's in that fire water. I know what you're talking about. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> One quart lasts about six months. At least it does for me, anyways. Okay, can you, under- can you understand me, Lance? We have another question in the chat room, and I'll try and okay. speak a bit slower uh-huh. here. Yeah, you got to be right in the mic. Though. Oh, okay. How hard is it? As a new artist, getting your music out with the distribution model changing from album sales to internet sales. Well, it, it's super. It's a lot different. It's a whole different animal, you know. And it's uh, it's one of those things where you're you're, you're going from you know, you, when someone you know back in the day used to hear a song on the radio or whatever, and they were like, "Man, I love that song." And you had to go out and buy the whole the whole album to get it. And you know, that's taking a lot of revenue out of the music, you know, itself. But uh, the downloading it online is, just makes it so much easier for people to get your music, access your music, instead of having to get in their car and go all the way to the store and get it. They can just get on their phone or and get online and, and download it to their phone or iPad or computer. And, uh, you know, it, it's actually, to me, you know, it's not bringing in the revenue that, you know, when you buy a whole album and stuff like that in the store back in the day. But it's making the music grow so much wider and it's making artists like me and artists that, you know, that doesn't have the major record deals that can get their music out of people you know, all over the world, you know. Are you uh, computer literate? I can, I can get around on one. I'm not one of those now. If it tears up, I can't worry. If, you know, if it locks up or something, I ain't, I ain't one of those to fix it. That's for sure. But I can get on it and, and, and do what I need to do. Yeah, that's quite a way to go about, uh, I mean, we do, you know, we have a little sign business and T-shirts and the radio show, of course, and pretty much okay. everything we do is online, on the Internet. Online. I mean, we hardly okay. ever use the phone for anything. That's the way of the world, man. And, you know, it's one of those things you just got to get on board and, 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 and go on with it, you know. I think Mark is writing a story about you or something. <laughs> he has lots of questions for you in the chat room. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, he's just uh, full of questions. Come on, Mark, bring them on. Bring them on. Bring them on. Oh, what else did I want to talk to you about? I might, you know, I don't, uh, I just like to yak. I don't care too much about some of that other stuff. Hell, you're a music maker. We know how yeah. all that works. Do you know how to play any other musical instruments other than your other than your guitar? Do I play any more any uh, any other musical instrument? Yes. The guitar is about the only thing I could say I could play. Uh, I can beat on some drums, but I, I wouldn't you know want to play in front of anybody. Why not? That's what the fun part is. <laughs> Hell, you must have had fun strumming that guitar in front of everybody till you got a grip on it. They would. Uh, they would probably throw stuff at me if I was playing drums in front of them. <laughs> Not going to be joining Led Zeppelin anytime soon then, huh? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, what do you do for fun? I mean, you, what do you do man, when you're I, in you the know, studio? I, I love this, to be home, man, and, and, there, and there's nothing better to me than, you know, than to hook the boat up to the truck and take it to the river, me and my son, or, you know, me and my girlfriend or whatever, get out in the boat and just spend the day at the river. You know, whether we catch anything or not, man, I just I just love being outdoors. You know, anything outdoors, it doesn't matter whether it's just riding, you know, on the four-wheeler or truck, down the dirt road or whatever, you know, but I just love being outdoors. When I have spare time, that's where you'll find me. Are you home now? I'm actually in Georgia right now, but I'm, I'm not at, actually at the house, but I'm at home. And, uh, and I'm in Georgia. I got a little bit of time off before we, we head up to Bristol, Tennessee for the, we're doing the show at the Bristol Motor Speedway, and then we head up north for some shows, and, and, and we're looking forward to that, too, and we're going to get busy on the road for the next month and a half. Tell us about the Rhythm and Roots. Ma'am? Tell us about the Rhythm and Roots. The Rhythm and Roots Festival? Yeah. Christine's. It's in, it's in Bristol, Tennessee. We're doing that this, this year for the first time, and it's a big downtown festival where it's Bristol, Tennessee and Bristol, Virginia, you know, it joins together there. And uh, they'd have a big festival every year, and we're doing two shows down there. Wow. He called you ma'am. Ma'am. I know. I think I think that's the only word I understand from him. I'm gonna go, I'll have, I have to do that because my mom is listening, and if I, whenever I get back when I see her, oh. if I didn't, she caught me for every time I didn't do that. No wonder he's behaving. <laughs> Did you have to go out and pick your own willow switch? You know, I have done that quite a few times. My mom had, had, had one of those one of those deals, actually she still does at home with the grandkids, but she don't use it near as much as she did back with us. <laughs> but she already had her pre her her pre you know, her switches in the in the house waiting on me. Well hi mom. You know, she kept it by her chair at all times. Yeah, you know? I got the I got the plastic hot wheel track across the back of my legs. <laughs> <laughs>
I only had to go pick a willow switch one time, and that was the only time, once. Oh, yeah. Flocks, water, you what? know, I've, been, I've been, been whooped a few times with them. It didn't hurt me none, though, at all. What do you mean, willow switch? Come on, Lance, help me out here. <laughs> There's a switch out in the yard. You go out and pick a switch, and you better pick a good one, because she, be, she go get her own, and then she get twice as much whooping with it. <laughs> do you know what he's talking about? No. Okay, a willow tree. Oh, okay. You go out and pull the longest, skinniest little branch you can, you jerk it off, and it's like a whip. And it crack it across the back oh. of your legs, buddy, and that shit talks some talk right there. Sound like you're a good man, you know, so it's obviously done you some good. You know, some of these little shits nowadays, they get away with everything because you're not allowed to well, discipline your children. you know, I, I think, you know, a lot of, I ain't saying you should beat your children or no, nothing like no, that. No, of course I'm not. In trouble for what I'm about to say, but I think a lot of children today, you know, that they're like, what's wrong with the kids today? I'm telling you. We wouldn't even thought about doing half the stuff these kids are doing today. Hell because no. we know we'd have got our tails tore up and do something wrong. They'd whoop us and send us home and then we get another whoop, you know? Yeah, exactly. There's a difference between disciplining your children and oh, beating there, them there's to There's death, a lot of you know? difference between discipline and, and beating one. I, I'm not one for beating a child or nothing like no. that. That's by far. And let me guess. The line for, let me guess. You didn't lose one bit of respect for them either, did you? I know, sir. I have plenty of respect for them. Yes, sir. And I, I still do to this day. My mom will still whoop me. If I needed it, <laughs> that's why I was laughing a little earlier when you said she hadn't used it much. I figured you were still getting a little tap here and there. <laughs> oh, every, yes, sir. You believe I get to the house and she'd be like, "That was so disrespectful." <laughs> <laughs> that's what we love about moms. I get the same thing all you the time. You gotta love her. You gotta love her. My mom is an angel. She is uh is is one of my uh, you know people that I you know inspired me a lot when I was a kid. You know she. Had a business and, and, and raised five boys and, and uh, went through breast cancer in, in back in 84 and, and survived and beat it. And to this day, she's still good to go. And, and you know, every day you see her with a smile on her face, you know. Uh, Christine, and, uh, Christine Lewis she, wants to know about competing in the finals for the Pepsi Gulf Coast Jam in Panama City coming up on Labor Day. It is coming up on Labor Day. We are looking forward to it because I'm telling you, there's a lot of great music that's involved in that. And uh, in whether we win or lose, man, it's just we're there for the experience and get an opportunity to get in front of people and share our music, and, and, and that's what it's all about. It isn't about who wins and loses. It's uh, it's about getting out there, and it's like a brotherhood. Everybody's there for, you know, just to, to share their music, and, 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 and everybody, you get to see what everybody else has got going on. Yeah, I never heard of that one, so I didn't know anything about that. Oh, it's, Mark, a, it's a big ahead. festival. Uh, Mark State wants to know, again, what's your thoughts on the resurgence of the 90s artists like Cam- Sammy Kershaw? Well, I, I think Sammy Kershaw, man, I loved all his music stuff back in the day, you know, and, and uh, I think we need a little more of that stuff in, 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 in today's music. I mean, there's some influences there mixed in and stuff, but, uh, you know, it, it to me, some of the best music that was made, you know, was 80s and 90s country, you know, and, and uh, not putting anything down, you know, I would... You know, I, everybody's like, you know, where do you where do you class yourself with all the all the greats? And I'm like, I don't, because that's why they're the greats. You know, one day if I ever get that far, that's great. But I still would never say I was as good as Keith Whitley. You know, and it's just, you know, there'll never be a, there's ne- there'll never be another Keith Whitley. You know. Well, Janet O'Connor wants to know who is your favorite male and female country artist. Favorite male and female? Are you gonna get me in trouble? <laughs> Miranda, you know, I have several female, you know, and, and everybody, you know, is, is like, well, who do you like? Who do you like? One that, one that you'll probably know is it would be my favorite would be Miranda Lambert, but I've always been a huge fan of Rebecca Lynn Howard. Uh, she had a, a big hit back in, you know, late late 2000s and, and uh, I mean, early 2000s, and, and I just have always been a huge fan of her. She's wrote tons of songs. She's a big songwriter in town, and I just think she has one of the greatest, you know, un- you know voices that hadn't been heard, you know. But uh, male, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan of a lot of guys, but uh, Craig Campbell would be, you know, would be my favorite because, you know, we, we grew up about 30 or 40 miles from each other, and uh, we've known each other for, for years. Yeah, I loved all those guys from the 90s, uh, Sammy and uh, oh, yeah. Leroy Parnell and, geez, there's a whole list of them. Oh, like Mark, man, uh, that, who was that Mark? That, uh, Mark did the, even the man in the moon, Mark Colley? Yeah, Mark Colley. Yeah, yeah all absolutely. those guys like that were yeah, good. Yeah, absolutely. I discovered you know, them when I was trucking. They were on the Shell Rotella tape series. You got one every time you bought a five-gallon bucket of fu- uh, oil from the truck stops. And I must have had, shit, I must have had 15 or 20 of those things. It's some of the best country music I'd ever heard in quite a while. Awesome. Yeah, you know, it, it's just one of those things, man. It was all about the song, the the lyrics. It's about the lyrics of the song. And, and, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with everything that's going on with the lyrics. You know, like you were talking about the bro country, you know. But, you know, there, it's just a lot younger audience than, than it was back then. 
you know, the younger kids, man, they want something with a beat that it moves them, you know, and, and you know, it, and that, if that's what turns them on, that's what turns them on, you know. Is there anybody you'd like to see make a big comeback? Oh, man, I would love to see a lot of them make a comeback. You know, I, I've, I've done a few shows with Doug Stone in the, in the last two years, and, uh, man, I, you know, he's got a new album out, and, and uh, you know, he, he's got a really good story, you know, and, uh, and I think, you know, he, he sings as good today as he did, you know, back in, in the 80s and 90s. You got any plans for going up north, like Ohio, up that way? Yeah, September. We, we, what's we, happening? We've got a show coming up in in you know in Ohio on the twenty fifth of September, and uh, it's in Canton, Ohio. It's at uh, Jersey Sports Grill, All American Jersey Sports Grill in in, in uh, Canton, Ohio. We're looking forward to that on September twenty fifth. In Canton, of all places. In Canton, Ohio. It'll be my first time being that in Ohio. I've never I've never been that far up. Well, I've been born and raised up there, up east of Cleveland. I'm a Yan- one of them damn Yankees, if you wanna. Them dang Yankees. Yeah, that's damn right. No, Yankees. I'm a damn Yankee. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, every, you know, everybody says well, you're from the south, and we just did that. We know a month, of, month and a half or so ago, we did a big show up in in the New England area. We did five shows up there, and everybody's like, well, "How do you like them Yankees?" And I'm like, I'm, I'll, "I I enjoyed every person I met, man. You know, everybody's like, well, they're so different. They ain't. Well, the ones I met were no different than we were. I mean." You know, in Sunderland, Georgia. I mean, Sunderland, Massachusetts. We, uh, th- you know, ninety percent of those guys that ran the club that night we were playing at. I, you know, you couldn't tell they were from Boston. They sound like you know Southern rednecks to me. You know, well, and uh, they like all the same things we do. Some big farming communities up there, man. And it's just uh, to me, you know, I-, I enjoyed every every day we were up there. Well, I tell a lot of people that about like the folks in Jersey and New York and all that. People talk about how rude they are, but. Uh... Yeah, you know I've spent a lot of time in Jersey, and I tell you what, those people might come off as rude in the beginning, but I tell you what, if you need something, buddy, they'll bend over backwards for you. Well, you know, it's just like everybody, about all all the guys back home here are all saying, you know, they're all rude and this and that and the other. I'm like, you know, the probably reason why they're rude to you is because you're rude to them. You always get what you give. You know what I mean? That's right. That's the that's the way I look at it. That's just like topping that state trooper when he pulls you over. That's exactly right, man. If you uh, he ain't gonna help you if you're rude to him. That's for sure. Nope. Uh, well, Kim Schmidt in the chat room asked if you are free on the twenty sixth because they've got their they've got their out truck show in Perrysburg, wherever Perrysburg. Perrysburg's is. in Ohio. It's up by Toledo. Oh, okay. So if you're free on the twenty sixth, get a hold of Kim Schmidt. She's in the chat room. See, what was it? What, what was she saying now? I'm sorry. Come on, um, in English. Where? Uh, where is it now? <laughs> Translate. Somebody wants to know if you're free on the 26th. There's a big truck show up in Perrysburg, Ohio. It's out there. It's up by Toledo. The 26th. I'm actually open that day. I'll, I'm actually in the in the middle of talking to a guy about doing a, a hunt because bow season in Ohio starts on the 26th. But uh, I'm having trouble getting me a tag <laughs> to get me. Uh oh. What's that all about? Right now. Get I'm trying to get me a deer hunt on the 26th because that's the day it comes in in Ohio. But uh, so far, I haven't had any luck getting a tag. This thing's, man, it's like a lottery up there. You may get one, you know, three years of uh, the flying for one. But, uh, you know, it's one. Of, I would love to. I'm going to be up there. I, we might as well go ahead and check it out. That's for sure. Tell them to send the information to me online. We'll, uh, we'll have to check it out. All right. And uh, if you had a chance to perform on stage with anybody right now, who would you pick? Well, I'm a huge Hank Williams Jr. fan, man. And I, and I all, you know, that's one of the, the things, you know, one of the milestones for me. I would, you know, everybody's like, you know, who's the one guy that, you know, if you you know had a goal of who you wanted to you know get out and tour and open with, I would be Hank Williams Jr. You know. Yeah, I sometimes wonder what he's like in real, you know, in person. Well, well, I, I know the guy that does you know in, in the management company that does handle all his booking. Man, he's like you'll never know who you get. Well, you know, it's Bo Severs or Hank. You know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> is he a, is he a big guy? I mean, have you ever seen him up you know in person? I've never I've never seen him up close, but uh, you know from photos that I know he's a friend of mine that met him and all. He looks like a, a pretty pretty big pretty pretty stout guy. That's one of the things I like about meeting most you know. Uh, country stars or anybody doesn't matter who it is just meeting them in person just for a few minutes just to see what they're really like because you really can learn a lot in those first few seconds that's right because i mean you know you see them on their videos and stuff like that and you you know and, it, and it's and it's not their fault but it's hard for you to really see who they are you know what i mean and, and you know everybody's like well who's the nicest person you're on the road with and you know everybody was super nice to me you know i mean everybody you know because they're just good old country boys no matter where they're from you know what i mean what do you uh Here's one for you. Um, Kelly Lee says, uh, Mike from Massachusetts wants to know, and I'm kind of curious too, what do you think about groups like Hank 3? Hank 3, you know, I, I, I think it's interesting. I think it's, uh, 
you know, he's doing his own thing, and uh, you know, it's he's he's not trying to, to to be anything other than what he is. You know what I mean? That's just how he is, and that's how he sings. So I think that's you know, he's he's doing what's true to him. You know? Yeah, I like his Mississippi Mud's one of my favorite ones. You know, I, I don't I don't have a problem with it at all. You know, I think it, I think it's neat and it's interesting. You know? What about groups like Cross Canadian Ragweed? Cross Canadian Ragweed, man, you know, it, it, it's kind of like Randy, the Randy Rogers band. You know, uh, this, all those groups are, are super talented. You know, every guy in the whole group's talented. There's not a wink, wink in the whole chain, but it's just one of those things, man. They're huge in Texas, or you know, back where they're from, but it's just hard for them to break out, you know, and really do something nationwide. You know. Yeah, I always wondered about that if it's their, if it's their name or if it's the music. I mean, the music's great. I just don't understand what it is with some of those groups. The first time I heard of them was on XM Satellite before that got taken yeah. over. And uh, you know, it, it's it's one of those things, man. It's just you know, it's uh, and it, it ain't because they're not working hard. Because I'm telling you, I, I know for sure the Randy Rogers band, man, them guys work as hard as hard as anybody in the music business. And it's just you know, it's one of those things, you know. I mean, they have a huge fan base and huge following, you know, in Texas, and they sell out, you know, places everywhere they go. But you know, they come down like to Georgia or wherever, and you know, just they just can't get the uh, reaction. You know, people just won't turn out for some reason. For what do you think about some of the songwriting mills in Nashville? You uh, you work with those guys, or you fight against them, or how's that go? Well, say that again. Now the songwriting one now. How do you? Uh are you uh, are you working with or fighting against uh, using the songwriting mills in Nashville? That's from Mark. Well, you know, the, the biggest thing for me is, you know, I, I've got tons, you know, several friends that are big songwriters and stuff like that, and and uh, it's one of those things, man. And it's you know, songwriters never get the credit that they're due. They never have, you know. You know, just several few, you know, break out, you know, and get the recognition that they need. And, you know, I'm all about the, you know, the songwriter needs to get what they need to get, you know, and, and the, the way I feel about it. And, you know, a lot of people may say, oh, he's full of crap. But, I, you know, if I didn't write the song, I don't I don't need any royalties from it, you know, because I didn't write the song. Let's make sure the songwriter gets what he needs. You know what I mean? I'm out touring, making money, playing shows because of the songs. I don't see where, you know, you should pay me royalties for just because I sang on the song, you know. How do you know... Uh... When you're looking over some songs or somebody brings you one, how do you know it's for you? I mean, do you sit down and just kind of go over it in your head a few times, or how do you figure that out? You know, I just I put a song in, and and, and <clears throat> nine times out of ten, it, it's one of those deals where you'll know whether or not it, it fits you or not. It's not that you know, there's tons of songs that I've passed on and that I wind up getting cut by other artists, and 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 I look at it and I'm like, man, I should have picked that one, but. It, you know, it just works for me at the time, and it fits them a whole lot better. You know, I just, I kind of find, I, when I'm looking for a song, if, if I didn't write it, and I'm, I'm going through songs from that have been pitched to us, it's, it's got to be something that I can relate to, that I really believe in, and that I could sell when I'm on stage to the people that I perform for. You know, it's, it's got to be, you know, an all around about thing that just fits me, and it's got to be real, you know. Do you do cover songs as well, or is it uh, songs that people have wrote for you? Or Do you do, co- <laughs> do, you do cover songs? Oh, I do tons of cover songs, man. I, you know, we we do some Conway Twitty and Nitty Gritty Dirt Band and some Garth Brooks, uh, you know, and and uh, you know, tons of other stuff. Any any, you know, stuff like you know, Randy Howler. I did some shows on him, man, and I love. I, I, I cover a song or two of his, maybe one of the shows we're playing. But uh, you know, it's just it's one of those things. And I played, you know, back in the day, we were a cover band for years. You know, growing up as kids, and and uh, you know, you you're going to carry those with you. You know, I throw a Bon Jovi tune in there, maybe some Skinner, and, you know. Now, Skinnered, we could do. That's some Southern rock right there. <laughs> what uh, sure. Janet O'Connor wants to know: Would you be willing to do a show with a new female country artist? I would love to. I, I love collaborating with other artists, whether they're you know established or unestablished. You know that's uh, that's what it's all about. You know the the outlaw thing back in the day. You know Willie and Waylon and Hank and and all those guys. You know they all worked together and 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 created something. You know and that's how they got to accomplish what they did back in the day. You uh, you have any idea whatever happened to Eric Church? Eric Church, man, I, you know, I, I think you know he he just got his own sound, you know, and it's kind of hard to, and a lot of people give him a hard time about, you know, oh, it doesn't sound like his old stuff. Well, he he's trying to to, and this is what a lot of people don't understand. Once you have a you know very successful record and 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 uh, you know have a hit song or whatever, and it's just it's built in instinct when you're with a label that you know, they they want you to outdo what you've already done. So you're steady trying to figure out how you can over outdo what you've already done, and it's it's really hard to do. That's a really hard creature to overcome, you know, to to outdo a, a huge multi-week number one song. That's that's really tough to do. That's got to be because it would seem to me um, that you get your style. You do your first album. People, you know, come to you. They love you because of your uh, 
let's say your first song, three, three or four songs, and then you try to change your style, and people are like, well, that's not what I came here for. Well, it, it's one of those things you have to be really careful about because, like I said, the whole reason you're out playing music and, and able to do what you do and make a living at what you do is because of fans, you know, and, and you've got to think about, you know, and like you know, we were talking a while ago in a song, if it's a song that I know that I don't believe in that's not me, then how are my fans going to accept that for me? You know what I mean? They know who I am and what I do. You know, you can't sell something to them that, that they know you don't believe in. Absolutely. I think a lot of people don't want to step out of their comfort zone either. And, and you know, it's one of those things, and you kind of kind of need to do it a little bit every once in a while. you got to step out the box a little bit, but just don't get completely out of the box. But, you know, sometimes you have to to keep it fresh and keep it interesting, you know? Well, that's right. Um, <laughs> blonde, brunette, or redhead? What's that now? The question, blonde, brunette, or redhead? Well, I'm a sucker for blonde. <laughs> That's what somebody else just said. They said uh, blonde is girlfriends, a beautiful blonde. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm always on the for blondes. <laughs> that was just a question. I just asked him. That's all. Uh-oh, it's getting personal now. Mark you said... You can ask me anything you want. It's fine. <laughs> Mark said boxes or briefs. <laughs> Who says this now? Who's asking this? Mark. Mark State wants to know boxers or briefs. It's just cool what day of the week it is. Sometimes I ain't got them washed and I don't have any on. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got no panties on. <laughs> I don't know why he can't hear you. What's wrong with can, that thing? Yeah, can you hear me okay? I can hear you now, yeah. Yeah, we've just turned it up a bit, but I feel like I'm shouting. you got to holler at me. I can't. We, from down where I'm from, we holler. We have, we don't, people saying, y'all holler or not. I said, this is how we talk. <laughs> we talk loud. <laughs> Go on, do you have something else? Anybody else got some questions there for uh, Lance while we're talking to him? Nice to have you with us, too. The Yankee and the Brit Show, the RTM Radio Network, 812. Uh, Lance Stinson hanging out with us here. You got questions? Bring them on. Hey, can you dance? Can you dance? Can I dance? Well, I'm one of those kind of things. I'm not I'm not big on public dancing, but I can. Uh, my, my girlfriend, we were in Vegas, and uh, it's, it was the last night there, and I convinced her to go into a dance club with me, and we had a great time. I don't think I've danced like that since I was in high school, but uh, I can. I can shake a leg. Sounds like me. I'll slow dance, but the hell with the rest of that funky stuff. Do you dance like um, Do you dance like a dad at a wedding or something? You know, pulling your shirt over your head and running around. You know, crazy yeah, dancing. I'm, I'm more of like kind of that. Uh, I'm not one. I'm not gonna get into the stinky leg or whatever they call it. The whipping it and. I got a teenage son, and he's like telling me all these things, and I'm like, "What are you talking about? It makes absolutely no sense." You know what I mean? <laughs> the stanky leg. What is a stanky leg? <laughs> it sounds like you need to go take a bath. Oh, hell. <laughs> Your leg stank. <laughs> I look like one of those guys, one of those big tall figures you see along the road with a fan. They blow them up, and they just stand there, and the arms wiggle in the air. You know? Oh, that is so true. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Um, Don Schmidt wants to know if Lance would like to f- would like to fish on Lake Erie. Have I said that right, Erie? Yeah. Oh, uh, Lake Erie. I would. You know, I would love to fish on Lake Erie. I tell you what, yeah, the, any, the perch up there is awesome. Anytime I can take advantage of fishing, I'm um, I'm down. You just tell me where to be at and when. You get some of that Lake Erie perch. I think you're going to like that. What oh, did I you, would love. What that. did you I say? Love, I love fishing. Period. So it doesn't matter. I'll fish anything. And what I, did you say? We grab your pole. <laughs> in Massachusetts and I had a day in between shows there and a friend I met there in Massachusetts took me fishing and I caught my first striper man and I'm telling you that was a lot of fun I bet a lot of fun a lot of fun <laughs> ask him again I said did you grab your pole and what your hook <laughs> Gra- grab my pole and what now <laughs> what, what your hook <laughs> oh I, well, I'd love to yeah <laughs> she just got a kick out of that grabbing your pole and what <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're insane i swear to god i know <laughs> oh man boy it's great having you here uh janet o'connor says that whiskey's her favorite song what do you think about that song how'd you like that well thank you i appreciate it you know that song was a song that i was that uh I, a group two actually good friends of mine were written and uh it was one of those songs that was pitched to me on the, on the first album and, and we were actually in the middle of finishing it up and it just didn't make the uh we were just already done and, and they were like no we're done we're not cutting any more music and i was with you know record label at the time and i'm like you know didn't really have a lot of say so on that so 
and it just kind of got through to the wayside and and uh and i love the song and and i think it's an incredible song I, you know because i've been there and done that whole thing and, and uh, i can relate to that song being you know i was i got a divorce i was married and divorced and uh and you know it was one of those things that come back around and i think it's just fate for me to cut that song and uh it's it's a it's been a huge song for us out on the road and and uh, everybody's loving that song because i think it's one of the songs that's very relatable and real you know um explain kicking the teeth country <laughs> man you know it, it's one of those things i really it's hard to explain i mean it's not really hard to explain but where it came from well i was doing an interview and somebody was like well how can you explain your style of music because it's not traditional and it's not rock and i, I was like you know it's just kind of kick you in the teeth country and it just kind of stuck it, it was not one of those things planned or anything it was just one of those i guess one liners that just kind of stuck with me but uh you know, it's kind of like I said earlier, you know, I had the influences from, you know, back with all the greats, you know, and George Jones with Merle Haggard and, and Don Williams and Conway Twitty and all those guys. With well, my dad, you know, when I was a kid, when he was an 8-track player in his truck, you know, listening to them, and then they got my brothers riding to school with them listening to the hair bands, and, you know, it's just kind of a mix between two, you know, because, you know, hair bands, man, they were rock. I mean, it was just kicking, and like they were going to blow the doors off the place. And, and you know, just, I related as, you know, this country was a little kick to it, so it's like kicking your teeth country. Yeah, you know? I like it. I think it sounds good. How yeah. many how many songs do you work on um, before you pick out what's going on your albums? This is a question from Mark. How many do I go through? You know what you're saying? Yeah, you know, if you're picking songs for your album, well, how you know, do you know which it's ones? It's one of those kind of things, you know, and, it, and, and writing music, you know, writing like we have been trying to, you know, write more music for this album that, you know, than we did on our on my first album. And uh, it's one of those things, I mean, you, you may write a great song today and you get in there and cut it and you're like, man, that's awesome. And then, you know, a week later you write one that's just ten times better and it just kind of bumps that one off. So it's kind of really hard to say, you know, you just got to find the right songs that, that fit together. You know, because on an album, it's pretty much, I want it to be like telling a story. You know, one song plays off the other one. Yeah. You know, so it all comes together at the end, you know. Kelly Lee Phillips, uh, she says, Lance does a lot of work performing for wounded warriors. Does he enjoy giving back to our veterans? You know, I love giving back to our, our veterans. I, the, my uncle that I was named after, I never got the opportunity to meet him because he got killed in the Korean War. And uh, it's one of those things. I've got friends that are in the military, and, and a lot of them have served overseas, and, and uh it's one of those things, you know, I would not be able to talk to you on the phone today or, or even play my music, even have a chance to play our music because, you know, freedom's not free. There's a lot of men and women that have died for, you know, years and years that, and, and ones that hadn't died that give their time, you know, to keep us safe here in America. And without them, we wouldn't be doing it. So why wouldn't we want to give back to them? You you know, to, everybody should. You ought to run for president. We could use somebody that gives a shit. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I ain't gonna get into that because I am, uh, I'm I'm one of those guys. I'm just pissed off about the whole situation. I think they should just scrap the whole Washington thing and start over. Amen. You know what I mean? I hear you. I'm all about that. You know, but yeah, we won't get into that. What they for the last 20 years ain't working. You know, like my daddy always said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, it's been broke. It's time to fix it. That's right. Yeah, I like to kind yeah. of stay away from the politics. I rant too much you about know, it as it is. I do too, and, and everybody's like, you got to be careful about it. I, you know, and, and a lot of people like, you're gonna get in trouble. I'm like. This is how I feel, and this is my right to feel this way. Exactly. You have the right to feel the way you do. You know, I'm not going to sit here and bash you for the way you feel, so don't bash me for the way I feel. Exactly. That's the freedom of speech. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, I don't understand, though. I just, uh, just irritates the hell out of me. Everybody likes to sit around and talk about it, but nobody wants to do anything about it. Nobody gets nothing done. I mean, my thing is, if you spent half the time getting it, working on it than you do talking about it, we'd already be in a whole heap better situation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want somebody that's going to get a better to do something. Let's quit talking about it. Show me something. Let's don't talk about it. Just show me, and then we'll talk about it. Uh, Janet says, Lance for president. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. I believe I could do a better job than what's been being done. I can promise you that. <laughs> Mr. 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 President, what do you think about taxes? <laughs> Well, I think about taxes, man. I, I'm gonna be honest with you, and, and a lot of people I know are really not digging this the whole idea. They've been, but I think a fair, flat tax on consumption, everybody would pay the same thing. It didn't matter, you know, what where you lived, how much money you made. You know, if you made ten million, you should pay, you know, ten thousand or whatever. Everybody should pay the same amount. Everybody's just, you know, on a flat tax. And fair I think that would make it a lot better and a lot fairer. There's a lot of people out there that ain't paying a dime that should be paying taxes. Fair across the board. That's right. That's right. That way, it's fair for everybody. Do you, you know? uh, do you need a personal Dean Dillon? 
do I need a what now? Do you need a personal Dean Dillon? No, I don't think I would. I'm not quite sure what that question means, but uh, I'm a little confused about it too. I mean, I, I'm I'm kind of like I don't know if I would or not. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't even know what it means. Period. So you're on your own on that one. Chris, Christine Lewis. Christine Lewis wants to know if you regret answering her message yet. Do I regret answering her message? Now, who was it again? Christine Lewis. No, I don't regret answering anybody's message. You know, whether you know it's Twitter, Facebook, or or any kind of our social media platform that we've got. If you send me a, if you send me a question, I'm going to answer it. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. It might not be what you want to hear, though. Exactly. Thank you, because she deserves that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What? Yeah. Uh, are you going to be on uh, Sirius or XM anytime in the near future? You, you know, we, we've been in, in, in a few conversations about that thing, and, and you know, we're uh, it, it's one of those things that's really hard, you know, when you're an independent artist, there's, you know, there's so many of them that, you know, they get crammed in there, and it's kind of hard to get filtered in there. I just don't want us to get lost in the mix. I want us to do it at the right time, you know, and I think that's, that, that makes a whole lot of sense. I think a lot of people try to rush things too much, and, and you kind of get lost in the mix. I think we're going to do it. I'm very sure we will do it, but we're trying to find, make sure we do it at the right time, you know. Oh, Dean Dillon's a songwriter. Well, I know Dean Dillon's a songwriter, but I was kind of confused. Do I want a Dean Dillon? Is that what you said, right? Yeah. Do I want a Dean Dillon? No, I mean, I'd love to have a guitar or something signed by him. I don't, you know. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard of him, so I don't know nothing about that, but that was Dean the Dillon was, is, is a, was a huge songwriter, but Dean Dillon was more of kind of, you know, he didn't really, he didn't really fit in a genre. He was just kind of, you know, his own thing, you know. And uh, Mark also wants to know, and Mark, uh, Mark does a lot of video work. Um, is it okay to shoot a video of the show while he's on the cruise? Because he'll be, probably be on the cruise absolutely, with you. Absolutely, man. Yeah, absolutely. He'll get together yeah. with you, I'm sure. He's real oh, good. Absolutely. He's good with that stuff. Yeah. Does some nice work. All right. So are we going to get on a tune? We'll put on one of Lance's tunes. Yeah, of um, course. We'll let him go here in a second. We don't want to keep him all night. Your girlfriend show up yet? <laughs> yeah, she's been around, hasn't she? No, I meant did she show up oh, at his house yet? Oh, yeah, she's heading your way, apparently. Who's that now? Your girlfriend. She, Jerice? She, oh, I, I hope she is. <laughs> she said she was. I don't know how far she was traveling, but she said she was headed your way. Yeah, we have a, uh, it's kind of one of those long-distance relationship things. We uh, we try to uh, get together, you know, whenever we can and when we're, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's been, uh, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been very enjoyable, but it's been, it has its struggles. You know, we live about six and a half hours apart from each other. Holy Hey, we managed it from 5,000 miles away. Yeah. And Randy. We did it 5,000 miles apart. Hell, that ain't nothing. Ooh, Lord, bless your heart, man. Bless your heart. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you what. It took about two or three years before she got over here, but she's here now. Oh, and she ain't man. getting away. Oh. You got 97,000 followers on social media. You're nearly oh, as yeah. popular as us. Oh, yeah. What's that? And I love each and every one of them. Because I'm telling you, they have uh, have helped uh, keep this machine going, you know, and, and, and it takes everybody working together. You know, everybody's like, you know, you've done this, you've done that, you know, and, and I, I'm not, you know, I have done, I'm out work hard and I'm doing everything I can, but without all their help, man, it would not be possible. I'm telling you, people like y'all, the radio stuff, every, you know, all the fans out there, this is, this whole thing, you know, everybody's like, when you come out with your new album, you know, this is our album. It's about, you know, the whole thing. It's not just me, you know what I mean? My dad, you know, I've heard him say, and I've heard, you know, older people, older guys say back in the day, if you ever see a turtle on top of a pole, he didn't get there by himself. Somebody put him up there. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> you know? What, uh, Janet says her favorite color is camo. You got a favorite color? Camo is her favorite color. Blue has always been my favorite color, but I do love camo. I do love me some good camo. Me, I like clear. You like clear? <laughs> you want to keep it transparent, huh? That's right. <laughs> it ain't easy these days either. Absolutely. Oh boy. It's got to be purple for me. What uh, you met Travis Tritt, right? Well, you know, I did do a show with Travis, and you know, Travis, was, you know, is from Georgia, and of course, you know, he was a big influence for my music back in the day. And man, I'm gonna tell you, that guy is still got it. You know, after all these years, everybody, you know, you wonder about an artist after. He's been, you know, playing music on you know professionally for twenty plus years, and you're like, man, I wonder if he still got it. I'm telling you, that guy rocks it as hard as he's ever rocked it still, man. I'm telling you. And, you what's know, what's he like as a nice person? Guy. What super nice guy. You know, he, he you know he doesn't he doesn't talk a whole lot, but his wife talks more than I think she makes up the difference. But she is a she is a social butterfly, uh -oh. and uh, they're they're both very nice, sweet people. That's for sure. Christine, uh, the one that asked you earlier, she. Uh, 
had said she wondered if you regretted uh, answering her email or her message. She uh, she's the one that contacted you to headline the cruise. Oh, absolutely not, man. I, we're looking forward to it, and you know, it, it's one of those things. You know, I mean, I know uh, Daryl Worley's done it. I know, know Daryl, and uh, he loves them, man. And I'm like, you know, dude, I, we we had talked about, you know, we'd love to do one, and hey, it come along, and, and I'm glad we're going to be able to do it. That's for sure. What do you like the most? I mean, do you have a preference as far as music goes? I mean, do you like traditional country or, you know, the... the well, uh, well, you know, I love the 80s and 90s country, but, you know, everybody's like, you know, what's your favorite, what's your favorite? And, and a lot of people ask me, you know, what you think about this guy or that guy and this guy. And I, and I don't like, you know, to, to, to be a critic on anybody because, you know, I'm, I'm not the greatest singer in the world. I've never claimed to be and never will. You know, I mean, everybody's like, oh, you're the greatest. You're, I could, you know, I could... You can go to town Nashville there and show you a thousand guys and girls that could sing standing on their head, you know, better than me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it, it's one of those things, man, I'm just glad I've been able to do what I love to do. And, uh, you know, it, it's just one of those things. But uh, I would have to say, you know, Keith Whitley was always my favorite singer and songwriter. And, and, and to this day, he still is. You know. um, I had mentioned that you had ninety-seven thousand or so followers. You uh, were you surprised by that when when you saw that? You know, I, you know, I, I was always a big MySpace guy back in the day, and then I, you know, everything went over to Facebook, and I finally got used to using Facebook real well. And then this Twitter came out, and I'm like, man! And I got on Twitter, and it was like speaking Spanish to me, and I'm like, I don't understand this at all. And it has taken, you know, I'm just old, old poor country boy. I don't, you know, I ain't got no big, high, you know, big college education or nothing. And, and I was like, I ain't going to be able to figure this out. It is, it's taken me a lot of time to, to figure it out. But I'm telling you, our Twitter has blown up in the last year and a half, and it is amazing at the response that we get, you know, on social media, whether, you know, it's Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or, you know, and stuff like that, Reverb Nation. And it's just it's, – it's a blessing that, you know, that people actually – want to be a part of what we're doing and uh and i'm glad that they do and we love every one of them well i'd like to thank all the twitter listeners that might be tuning in tonight also it's 8 28 we're on the phone with lance stinson the guy is awesome go check his tunes out you're going to love him it's the yankee and the brit on the rtm radio network we're just having a hell of a good time here with this man just uh can't beat it good old country boy i can tell you that much yes sir <laughs> anything else you want to add over there we got him for about an hour let's let him go here so he can go back and have a life <laughs> Well, um, we do have another question in the chat room. Kim wants, well, Kim Speller wants to know, Cash, Waylon, or Willie? Cash, Waylon, or Willie. You know, I love me some Cash, but I am a Cash, Willie, or Waylon. I'm, I'm a big Waylon Jennings fan. You know, it, it's kind of hard to pick between, you know, those guys because they're all awesome and they all have their own little sound and stuff. But uh, Waylon, you know, it, to me, I can just relate with him a lot more. You know what I mean? His music and him the way he's lyrically written and stuff like that. You know, I love me some Waylon. I love some Johnny, and I, and I love Willie, too, man. I uh, just fell back in love with Willie again because it's all going to pot. That's, <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> That's my kind of tune right there, whether you like it or not. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, that's my boy, man. I went to the fuel stop. He bought Carl's Corners here in Texas years ago, and uh, he started uh, selling uh, that biodiesel fuel for the trucks. And uh, a lot of guys started flocking in there thinking they were going to go in there to a big pot party or something, you know. It didn't turn out that way, but uh, it was pretty yeah. cool having him around the area, you know, doing something for everybody. Well, you know, it's, um, it's great that, that, you know, he would, you know, do that kind of thing. And, and you know, I wish it would, you know, there's there's got to be ways and the stuff to get us, you know, away from all this farm fuel that, you know, we consume every day. You know what I mean? There, there, there's got to be a better way, you know, and I'm sure sooner or later we're going to find it. You know, there are better ways, but you know, it's the money. It is. It's what it's all about. You know, I mean, you know, I was in the car business for nine and a half years, and I was a finance guy for car dealer for the Dodge manufacturer. And this has been, you know, 11, 12 years ago. And, you know, we were sitting there talking with a rep, and he was like, and, you know, they, they've got cars that get better gas miles. But, you know, it's just a political thing, man. You know, and it's all about that almighty dollar. You mind, if, you mind if we ask how old you are? Well, I just had a birthday, and, uh, I'm proud to say I'm 36 years old. Oh, very good. Hell, you're still young. Same age as me. Oh, well, you know, uh, it, like you know, uh, Mickey Mantle says he you know, he's gonna live this long. He took better care of himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're the same age as the Brit, so you guys already got something in common. Oh, awesome. Not that you can understand each other. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a translation book that comes along with you? <laughs> it's about it's about two thousand and five hundred pages. <laughs> it took Randy three and years. You know the same about me, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's also a sub part to it too. It goes on and on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. When, when when me and Randy first started talking to each other on webcam, you know, we'd be talking about something and he'd be talking about the garden tap, for example, and, uh, and he'd be talking about a faucet, and I'd be like, faucet? What the hell's a faucet? Okay. And we'd just cut each other up in the middle of conversations to say, did you just say door? What's a door? <laughs> <laughs> I had to explain to her what a faucet was. Then I had to give her the spigot. Then I had to tell her it's a water tap. And the list went <laughs> on and on until it finally made sense to her what the hell I was going on about. Yeah, well, you know, we call them, you know, everybody, you know, saying, what are you talking about a water hose? We don't call them. Everybody's like, that's a garden hose. I'm like, no, it ain't no garden hose. It's a water hose. That's a water hose. We used to drink out of them. It's a garden <laughs> hose. You know? I still drink out of them. And everybody, you know, made a big deal out of it. I'm like, man, if, if, if that was harmful... I've got four brothers, and we all drink out of the out, out of the garden hose. You know what I mean? And everybody calls the garden hose garden hose. I'm like, no, we we drink out of a water, a water hose. Is what we call it, because I have been beat with a water hose. I know what a water hose is. You know. <laughs> Dave wants you to say router. <laughs> Router. <laughs> Oh, my God, this is too much. Let's let him get off the phone so he can go have a life. I again. say tomato, you <laughs> say tomato. Well, I want to thank y'all for, for everything you do, not just for me, but for everybody out there. I do appreciate it. Man, it's fantastic having you come by. You know, I got to tell you, too, I got to be honest with you. When I uh, first looked at your web page and pulled up some of your photos and was checking them out, I was like, man, that dude don't smile. He looks like he's going to be a cranky son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to have that serious look, man. That no, look, you know, no. That serious look. <laughs> <laughs> well, I apologize for that because you just threw, blew the whole thing out of the water. You're a hell of a nice guy, well, man. We're tickled to death to have you call in and talk with us for a little while. Well, I enjoyed it, and I'd love to do it anytime you want me to. Well, Christine's got one more question. Come on, get it out, woman. Come on, Christine, we're just dying to know. Lance, would you like to make your fan cruise a yearly event? You know, I would love to if they'd have me, that's for sure. I bet they will. You work with Christine, Dave especially, and I'm telling you, they'll set you up. Cause I would love to. We can make it an annual thing. That would be awesome. And Mrs. Dave said thanks for uh, coming by and putting up with us. Oh, man, thank you. I really do appreciate you all having me. It means a lot to you. Yeah, make sure you call her Giggles when you see her, too. That's Dave's wife. Giggles. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll remember that. I was just, I'm making me a note right now of Giggles. <laughs> I there, I got one on you, Christy. <laughs> Yankee and the Brit, the RTM Radio Network, thank you ever so much for coming by and hanging out with us. Yes, and you're welcome anytime on why, this. Why don't show. you, uh, if you'd like, if you were talking about some little promos in that earlier, why don't you call tomorrow if you got some time or something? I'll, I'll do it. I'll definitely do it. We'll do some liners for you. Sounds That's like a plan, sure. man. Been I'd be glad to. I'd love to. Ah, that's what he was saying. He was saying liners. Yeah. Ah, you know when you called up earlier? I thought you said lanyards. I thought David sent you. She What's thought that? you were talking about lanyards, you know, like you hang around your neck and all that. Like your neck, yeah. I'm like, what? She's like, I bet she was like, what do you need them for? You're on the telephone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she can be a hoot, that's for sure. I'm trying to put the country in the Brit. Not happening. Okay. Yeah, I know it's not <laughs> happening. <laughs> oh, yeah, he couldn't hear anything else, but he heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think he's got selective hearing. <laughs> Just like my grandma. She'll hear what she wants to hear. <laughs> I have that, that selective hearing. All right, man, go on, get yourself a life. We'll talk to you later. Appreciate it, man. It's just been a hell Thank of a good time. Thank you for having me again, and, and everybody, God bless you out there. Thank you all for following us. Everybody, Lance Stinson on the RTM Radio Network. Thanks again. Let's hit one of his tunes here, Whiskey, on the RTM Radio Network with the Yankee and the Brit, the RTM Radio Nitwits. Looking at myself, looking at myself in the mirror. When the bartender poured me one more shot.